Той е съзъднал активно с числени моменти, за задача с висока размерност, но през последните две години, което ми направих впечатление, макар че не съм питал от тип детайлно точно тези работи, съм дявам сега да разбра повече, е активната им работа на него и хора около него, върху проблеми, свързани с така наречените дробна дифузия, която поне според мен играе активна роля в съвременното моделиране. И разбира се, неизменна част от това е как можем да решаваме числени от тези задачи, защото и аналитично може да пише някакви неща, някакви път явно, но много рядко нещата работят добре. Най-напред да се поздравим с утрешния празник. Имам дилема дали днес да говоря на български и на английски. Слайдовете са на английски. Днес е леди, кой е снат спикинг българиен. Yes. No, no problem. I can go out if you don't want to. This is my problem. Persons in the audience is not making Bulgarian. Yes. Speaking is better to speak in English, but if you prefer to train your Bulgarian. You see, this is the title of uh, my talk today. In the abstract, uh, mm, It was slightly different. It was from Caffarelli to Lura. Now Caffarelli is somehow a popular name for the uh, mathematical society at all during the last uh, months because uh, he got recently, he was awarded recently, the Abel Prize. But uh, <clears throat> then I uh, looked at my title and what I will mention is a paper by Caffarelli Sylvester <clears throat> so that it's more correct to, to say that uh, the starting point of uh, the methods I will present is a paper by Caffarelli and Sylvester. Bura is abbreviation. This is not Bulgarian uniformational approximation. This is best uniform rational approximation, but uh, for the community, uh, the abbreviation Bura is associated with our group here in Soviet, so it is uh, created or introduced this method here, studied, and more or less popular in the community. <coughs> These are some topics I will try to cover, and uh, <coughs> We will speak about uh, fractional diffusion, means uh, fractional powers of the diffusion operator. So that, uh, it's completely different to say using some sets. <laughs> Uh, there are many people dealing with fractional derivatives and uh, some related uh, initial value, boundary value problems. Here, the, the talk is about uh, fractional power of the diffusion operator. Uh, it's very simple the definition because we will speak about spectral definition of the uh, fractional power, 
of the operator, the, the power is supposed to be between 0 and 1, and when alpha is equal to 1, this is the standard diffusion, if you prefer the standard uh, Laplace of standard uh, <coughs> for some equation. Uh, I would prefer to skip some uh, details about the introduction because they will be discussed during the talk. Here's the definition of the spectral fractional diffusion. We have the say, standard elliptic uh, public value problem, the uh, functional, bilinear functional associated with uh, the second order uh, elliptic uh, boundary value problem. Uh, the assumptions are normal, the operator is self-adjoint, uh, positive definite, the spectrum is uh, symmetric, or self-adjoint, the spectrum is real, diagonal values are positive, and uh, <coughs> applying the spectral decomposition of the operator, uh, if here alpha is equal to 1, we have the representation of uh, the operator is a sum where lambda i are positive eigenvalues and uh, uh, psi i are the eigenfunction. So that I'm sure this is very clear. And then the fractional power is again simply uh, defined because we apply the fractional power to the uh, eigenvalues. They are positive, otherwise this definition is not correct. But now it is uh, uh, very simple, the definition. There are different definitions of uh, fractional diffusion operators in the paper. They have listed maybe 10 uh, different definitions. Uh, some of them, they are almost equivalent. Uh, another standard definition is through the integral representation of the um, fractional Laplacian, but then, uh, then uh, the boundary conditions, they introduce the difference. Here the boundary conditions are Mm, defined on the mm, standard local uh, boundary value problem, and then uh, the fractional power is uh, applied for the spectral decomposition uh, for the integral definition. The boundary conditions are non local, so that we have, if talking about homogeneous boundary conditions. It's supposed that the solution is zero outside the, the whole computational <coughs> domain. They are not equivalent to the different definitions. And in many cases, they are equivalent uh, uh, if the boundary conditions are not uh, uh, applied. And similar is the situation about the discrete uh, uh, elliptic problem. Discrete elliptic problem means the system of linear algebraic equations we obtain after discretization of the boundary value problem. Uh, finite differences or finite elements uh, or some other um, numerical methods, uh, boundary element methods, but in this case they are not uh, commonly used. Uh, so let, let us suppose that some mesh 
uh, make a piece of white. Let's just think uh, by default about uh, finite differences or finite elements. Then uh, the matrix is uh, the stiffness matrix is the terminology in the finite element uh, discretization. It's symmetric, positive, definite, sparse, which is very important. And uh, again, we apply spectral decomposition. Here, uh, W is the matrix of the eigenvalues, uh, of the eigenvectors uh, transposed. Uh, and uh, D is uh, the diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues. So that, again, the power is applied <coughs> to the eigenvalues. And you see how simple is this definition. The inverse is also very simple to write. And uh, one could say, come on, we have a method. Applying uh, this formula, we solve the problem. Which is not uh, really the case, because uh, to apply such approach, we have to compute the whole spectrum the whole eigenfunctions and eigenvectors. People say, come on, we have software, we have computers. But we are talking about large-scale problems with potential to solve uh, uh, discrete problems with hundreds of millions of degrees of freedom, billions of degrees of freedom. Where is the limit? The limit is exactly where is the limit for the standard diffusion. And I will show you uh, why we are able to, to reach such a limit. Uh, so that we are not able to compute the spectrum for uh, real life problems. This is possible with some simple uh, geometry, tensor product of intervals where we know uh, the spectrum. Uniform mesh in general. We are not able to compute the spectrum. We are not able to compute the matrix. This matrix is not computable. And we want to solve the system with this matrix. This matrix is dense. A is sparse. A to the power alpha is dense. So let's suppose you have hundreds of millions of degrees of freedom or unknowns. Such a matrix, it's dense. Even if you're able to compute, you're not able to store. <coughs> so that this is the starting point. And uh, the story uh, starts with uh, a paper by Farrell and Sylvester from 2007. This is a paper about uh, differential operators. The first numerical matrix comes approximately 10 years after. And what is the idea of uh, the paper of Farrell? Uh, the idea is to define a proper extension of the spectral diffusion operator to an elliptic boundary value problem which is without spectral, uh, without fractional power, so that this is a standard if this is uh, the word. Uh, standard to local differential operation, and this is uh, done in the paper of Kaffarel and Sylvester. The cost is that if the uh, problem we have to solve is in deep dimensional uh, space, we are not talking about 1D problems. If the problem is 1D, we are not uh, interested. 
such problems are not large scale, so that the methods are not for one dimensional problems. So that uh, if we have a d dimensional problem, the extension uh, leads to d plus one dimensional problem, so that uh, this is one of uh, the results. Then here we have a coefficient which is, uh, we have a singularity of uh, the diffusion operator with this additional dimension introduced. And uh, this problem is uh, in the semi-infinite cylinder, so that this is also a problem. And uh, here is the result. We consider this problem in this uh, extended domain. And if we have uh, <coughs> zero boundary conditions asymptotically at the infinity with respect to y, and uh, uh, this boundary condition, uh, which is uh, normal boundary condition, or normal boundary condition at the beginning, then the solution of the fractional diffusion problem is obtained for y equal to zero. So that this is uh, the construction. And uh, I would not speculate that this is the most important paper by Kavarek, because in his uh, results are in a very broad uh, scope, but this is the most uh, cited paper by Kaffarelli. And this also is some, uh, let's say, argument to say that uh, the topic is uh, interesting, or interesting for the community. For mathematical problem, for a mathematical paper, uh, the number of citations of this paper are really um, amazing. You could check. Kafarelli is uh, working at University of Texas at Austin, one of the um, strongest universities with respect to differential equations, numerical methods. Bausch was uh, also there for those who know who is Bausch. Uh, and in 2007, we had this uh, paper. This is the first result saying how we are able to solve uh, problems in domains omega with a general geometry. And then they are coming uh, almost the same time because 16, 15, 16, 17, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure when the paper has been submitted, how long um, the paper has been under review. Uh, so that uh, three different approaches appear absolutely independently. Uh, in different groups, and uh, the first is based on the um, extension of uh, Caffarelli and Sylvester. This is a paper by Chen Mocetto, Rick and Saldago. I know personally Mocetto and Salgado. Uh, so that they developed a method. They prove, uh, uh, estimates what will happen if we truncate uh, the domain, uh, not to consider the problem uh, in the final domain. Uh, they uh, develop a special method for solving this strongly anisotropic uh, problem with respect to this uh, additional uh, dimension y. And then there is coming uh, a paper by uh, Lubiszewicz. Lubiszewicz is also 
very well known for Bulgarian community working in the field of numerical methods. Lubiszewicz applied different uh, approach with using pseudo parabolic extension. Similar to uh, the approach by Kafarevi uh, and Sylvester, but not elliptic, but pseudo parabolic. And then it's coming the paper by <coughs> Bonito and Pasek, where they start with integral representation of the inverse of the fractional diffusion operator and then developing a special class of uh, quadrature forms. Uh, at that time, the paper by uh, Bonito and Pasha was considered as a golden standard because they, they proved exponential computational uh, complexity exponential convergence, exponential convergence with respect to the number of uh, quadrature points. And uh, I met uh, Pasek uh, in 2015. We already started thinking about uh, fractional diffusion problems, but motivated by completely different problems related to image processing together with uh, Stanislav Karizanov and uh, who also was Kolter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we started with a method which was not of optimal complexity so that um, uh, in this paper in 2018, we proposed the concept of the Bura method based on best uniform ratio approximation of a scalar function z to the power alpha in the interval 0, 1. And uh, some years after, it was uh, proved by Okay, it was observed by many of us, uh, which are the uh, developers of the different methods uh, have mentioned something, but uh, Clemens Hopwriter uh, proved that all uh, three approaches, they lead to some rational approximation of the inverse of the discrete fractional diffusion operator. So, all day, although coming from completely different uh, approach, they lead to some rational approximation. And then, what was the conclusion? Bura uses best uniform rational approximation. In this sense, Bura is the best method by construction, by definitions, by proofs also. So that this is a, a short uh, story about uh, the methods. And uh, in 2020, Pashek joined us. And uh, we have uh, the construction, which uh, actually we use now is uh, when we are saying that Bora method is applied and uh, then the theoretical estimate is that we have convergence with exponential rate with respect to the degree of the rational approximation. Of course, I will skip any details about the proofs, but look what is the uh, theorem. Uh, this is the error estimate of the solution obtained uh, 
when boromite is uh, applied to the finite element discretization with linear finite elements. First, uh, we have here, this is the denominating part. h to the power 2 times alpha is the, the term of the estimate of the finite element approximation. When we have the standard, uh, um, say, uh, diffusion, we apply uh, linear finite elements, we use um, some quasi-uniform mesh, uh, and then the error is of order h to the power 2, uh, assuming that uh, some regularity exists and in L2 now. So that again, if standard diffusion uh, is uh, studied, we have h to the power 2 uh, error estimate. But if alpha is equal to 1 half, the mid of the interval, we have error estimate of order all to the power h. If alpha is equal to 0 0.25, we have a square root of uh, h only as an error estimate. And this is not only the estimate, this is the real behavior of the field. So that this is not uh, a matter of uh, a lack of skills to prove something better. Then uh, the second uh, part is uh, the uh, error due to the uh, Bura approximation of the fractional diffusion operator. Here is k. k is the degree of the rational approximation. And you see this exponential decay of the uh, error when k is increasing. You will see we are able to solve uh, extremely large problems with good accuracy of k equal to say 6, 7, 8, 10, so that for small k, similar accuracy was achieved by the method of Bonito and Pasek for k equal to 100, so that uh, this is the um, result of uh, best uniform rational approximation compared to some other methods. Uh, and uh, there were some challenges uh, uh, related to, to this problem. How to find uh, the best uniform rational approximation of uh, z to the power alpha? Seems very simple problem, uh, completely non-trivial, but uh, the very serious contribution is also related to Bulgaria in a conference in the 80s or 90s. Uh, was uh, I guess, uh, 91. 91, okay. In Varna, Stahl uh, has presented uh, his results about the best uniform rational approximation of uh, z to the power of uh, in z in the interval 0, 1 with uh, proof of the convergence, with the characterization of the poles, characterization of the zeros. Uh, a fundamental result. So that we have this. How to, to find this best uniform rational approximation? When we started, uh, we had uh, Pancho Marino in our team with uh, his results in uh, uh, applying Hausdorff approximation for numerical solution, numerical uh, implementation of RMS algorithm. RMS algorithm was considered as a, again, golden standard for solving uh, such uh, non-local minimax problems. And we did our best 
I'm able to solve the problem of uh, say approximately up to uh, say k is equal to 10. Why this was so difficult problem? Because uh, the clustering of uh, the uh, say groups was again uh, exponential. We had exponential clustering of the nodes. We had exponential growth of the uh, of the zeros. And the exponential growth uh, to minus infinity of uh, the poles. Uh, and all this uh, resulted in problems with solving such a problem with uh, mm, single, double, Quattro uh, uh, arithmetic, and we are not able to solve the problem of k uh, larger than, uh, say, 10. And then uh, was published. You see how mm, the things happened. So our paper was in 2018 published about Bora, the result of uh, Oxford Group. Uh, uh, where Trafton uh, is one of the authors was published uh, that year. Uh, and uh, they developed so called AAA uh, method, uh, representing the rational function as a ratio of two rational functions in such a way stabilizing the, uh, the method. And uh, then uh, they were able to, to, to solve uh, the problem for really very large uh, case, uh, say approaching 100, and we don't need this. So that this was the result of threatening, and uh, uh, it is also uh, interesting to say that uh, Nick Threaten received in 2020 the John von Neumann Prize uh, of Siam. And his uh, Honor lecture was in, on, on this uh, AAA algorithm. And then our good friend, uh, colleague and friend, uh, uh, Clemens Hopwriter, developed his uh, software Brazil, improving the complexity, the convergence, uh, uh, using some special tricks so that we use the Brazil software, which is uh, public, uh, uh, publicly available uh, to, to solve the problem. So that now we were able to, to find uh, the Bora for large enough care. <coughs> and here a short comment. If we have a standard uh, diffusion problem, if we have this estimate of h to the power 2, and if h is equal to 10 to the power minus 2, some discretization with uh, 100 uh, points in each of the directions, if you are talking about um, the model problem in the unit square, uh, which is not a big problem, you uh, are able to, to get accuracy of uh, order 10 to the power 4. And if you would like to solve uh, a problem with fractional power alpha equal to 1 fourth, uh, then h equal to 10 to the power minus 8 is needed to get the same accuracy. But this means uh, that the number of degrees of freedom is 10 to the 16. Uh, such problems are not uh, possible to solve even using uh, the most powerful supercomputers in, in general geometry. Uh, so right here the point is that we have to to use um, uh, proper local refinement. And uh, uh, in this uh, paper, we show that we got accuracy of 10 to the uh, 
minus volt with only 523 unknowns. Put this model problem, but this is a benchmark problem, so called checkerboard uh, problem because we have uh, uh, jumping uh, uh, right hand side uh, like a checkerboard, and we have uh, layers um, very uh, steep and uh, all the problems which typically appear in the fractional diffusion. So that without um, this work of time, uh, you are not able to, to, to get this uh, accuracy. And here is uh, a plot about computational complexity and comparison. And uh, here is Bora, more or less, uh, the, the uh, plot uh, for AAA is uh, uh, slightly below the results of Bura, but AAA in this implementation suppose that we know exactly the, uh, the first eigenvalue of the problem, while in, in the Bura implementation we used some uh, general uh, theorem from the one characteristic law inequality about the bound uh, for the first eigenvalue. And uh, you see here, this is for the parabolic extension, the green is for the elliptic extension, and here this is for the um, quadrature formulas, the method of Bohr and Pasha. And what I mentioned, what we have got for less than 10. Uh, uh, is a, a degree of the rational approximation was obtained for almost 100 uh, quadrature rules. And what is the, the link between all this stuff? K means that we have to solve K systems with standard mm, sparse uh, linear systems which are diagonally perturbed in the, uh, the stiffness matrix <coughs> for discretization of the Laplacian. So that adding something uh, positive uh, to the diagonal. And other methods, they, they lead to the same. Reducing the problem, the discrete problem, to solving some number of uh, sparse, uh, symmetric, positive, definite uh, systems which are uh, some diagonal perturbation of the stiffness matrix for the, um, for the standard diffusion. And now <coughs> I'll try to, to finish my um, talk with him say five minutes because uh, what I have is for much longer time. I was possible to, to speak faster at the beginning, but I prefer to try to be more well understood in this case. <coughs> the new results of our group are related to developing of uh, preconditioners based on the if you have, what is the precondition? This is uh, some technique to uh, increase the convergence of uh, some iterative method. If you have, uh, say, the um, conjugate gradient method, which is one of the uh, top ten achievements uh, in computational mathematics, there were some rankings at the end of the uh, 20th century, so that the conjugate gradient is there. If uh, we want to increase the convergence to get uh, methods of optimal computational complexity, uniform convergence with just few iterations, say six, seven, we need a preconditioners. When we are talking about fractional diffusion, the idea of iterative solution is um, even not possible to consider because 
To have iterative method, you need to find the residual at each step. So that to, to see what is the difference between uh, the uh, exact solution and uh, uh, approximate solution uh, in the norm associated by the uh, by the discrete uh, elliptic or the law of the stiffness matrix. But we are not able to perform the computation of a to the power of uh, times uh, a matrix. We are not able to compute the, the residual so that the preconditioning is uh, out of the business so that what we have developed is related to <coughs> preconditioners for coupled problems where fractional powers appear in preconditioning the coupled problem. Two examples. Uh, the first is about the, uh, the C-stock system and uh, we have interfaces uh, of different geometry between the, the C uh, domains and uh, stocks domain. This is another problem when we have some um, say coupling of 3D domain with 1D manifold embedding. Mm. You could think about this 1D system as a capillarity system if we are talking about biomedical applications. And uh, what is the, the result in preconditioning the coupled system, which saddle point, the, the, the most simple preconditioner, which is both diagonal, appears a uh, fractional power of some uh, interface problem. And for this fractional power, we apply a uh, uh, For this uh, uh, second problem, where we have uh, uh, 1D uh, inclusion in the 3D domain, appears some strange uh, uh, operator to the power minus 0 0.40 just some idea how people could uh, derive uh, the right fractional powers. Um, this is taken for, from a paper. So that we have such uh, results. And uh, the last is about domain decomposition. I will go directly to the numerical test. Domain decomposition is a uh, um, driving concept of developing parallel numerical methods. To split the problem to some uh, sub-problems in subdomains and to solve the sub-problems in, in the subdomains uh, in parallel. Here in the pitch is about simple model problem, but the theory the method is really general for general uh, up to 3D uh, domains with general interfaces. Why this is the case? Because we are able applying Bura to solve interface problems which are robust, means independence from the geometry of the interface. And uh, many people say, come on, I will solve the sub uh, problems and then I will iterate by some way to get a global convergence. Maybe this is not so bad, but if such a simple approach is applied, the number of iterations will increase with the number of the nodes, with the number of subdomains, so that it's quite possible to lose all the, um, say, profit of solving such sub-problems in subdomains in parallel because the number of iterations could be of order of the number of unknowns in the worst case or square root of the number of uh, unknowns and what we have in our method is that is the preconditioner the interface problem 
which is the form, uh, uh, which is uh, based on the um, trace uh, uh, theorem, which is in equivalent to the interface problem to the square root of the discrete Laplace in order Laplace Betremi, no trami operator uh, along the, um, the interface. And when in the 90s people started with uh, domain uh, split in two subdomains and they had one line interface, they developed that based on using fast Fourier transform to perform the uh, solution of uh, um, discrete Laplace to the power one half. And then, up to, say, quite recently, up to now, it was not possible to solve uh, efficiently the interface problems with interfaces with a cross point or many cross points or uh, very general manifold of, uh, uh, say, one uh, degree lower than the, the uh, computational domain. Now we have this uh, non-overlapping domain decomposition method based on Bura. Uh, this result is still not well enough understood by the community <laughs> because the paper was published almost a year ago. So that uh, I'm trying to convince the people that this is something new and which is, I believe, much better than everything else existing in the field. I was not able to, uh, to talk about this, but uh, um, some results. You see, we have some number of uh, uniform refinement of the mesh, starting with some mesh, uh, refining uh, by dividing uh, in two in each of the directions the mesh size. So that this is uh, the, uh, uh, you see what is uh, the corresponding number of uh, unknowns and number of the finite elements. So that seventh level of refinement means uh, uh, more than four million degrees of freedom. And then here is the result about the <coughs> number of iterations needed to solve the problem with this accuracy. You see that uh, uh, for smaller problems, even uh, for uh, subsystems to, to solve or degree of duration of approximation equal to 4 is enough. But for the larger problem, 9 is enough. So that, once again, to solve the non-local, extremely computationally expensive problem, in general geometry, uh, in 2D or 3D, it is enough to use, say, uh, rational approximation of the 12 means we have to solve for this purpose 12 uh, standard local systems, local stars, and uh, in the domain decomposition concept, the next step, the next question is to analyze and to improve the method uh, so that to have a stabilized version. Stabilized means to guarantee the convergence uh, that you will keep if the Sub problems are not exactly solved. This is not, uh, uh, say, by default. This is not true for the construction we have published, but uh, we have ideas about stabilizing uh, uh, the domain uh, composition method so that to be sure that solving inexactly the sub problems, we will keep 
the, the general convergence. And uh, here are some concluding remarks, more or less I mentioned uh, the things. And here are some publications uh, on the topic. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, we started in 2018. It's published, uh, publication was the paper. It was in the review almost two years. One and a half, I think. Uh, and the, the most serious question was but why we propose a new method when there are already the three methods I mentioned by Chetwin Saldago, by Vyshchevich, by Pashek and Bonito. Now we know that we were right in our method. This is the best. Thank you. Thanks for the interesting talk. Are there any questions? Surprised uh, if there are no questions. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that the presentation uh, could be shared. Uh, I think uh, it can be shared and also it is recorded. So it can be. No, but recording is recording and the, the, uh, if separately available the presentation, I also agree. Uh, because uh, in the presentation you want to look uh, more carefully. Uh, anyone is very welcome to ask uh, questions personally, not only me, but also Kautas, uh, very mentioned, uh, uh, Stanislav, uh, who is almost in all of the papers listed, Kautas, uh, Benjamin, who is also uh, there, Rachel was a good team now, this is also part of our team. Joe Pashek joined us for some of the most important publications. We have a lot of friends, Nikola Kostovsky, who working together with us uh, mm -hmm. in particular in things related to uh, implementation and understanding of computational uh, issues uh, together with. Uh, the mm, other and uh, Nicola, we have solved uh, a really very large scale problem to demonstrate the potential in computational domain, which could be considered as a general 3D domain with hundreds of millions of degrees of freedom, Neumann boundary condition, shows flow in, say, mm, which uh, media which uh, is described by a fractional uh, diffusion operator could think that this is a pulse medium because this is one of the examples. So let once again uh, up. So I was wondering about apparatus, apparatus results, right? So that uh, you can take a fractional PD problem and then you can make it equivalent, let's say, let's say equivalent to a deal of, uh, of, of gradients times the minus of the power of one minus two alpha or something. Right? How does this this Right? I, I, I'm just tempted that uh, this thing can possibly be proven. Theory to 
So that there are such results, you have a non-local problem, use the proper extension and reduce it or transfer it the problem to local problem in one plus dimension. There are no other questions, let's thank the speaker again.